Hi, this is Paula J delivering cybersecurity talk at Secure Academy and uh, this is a series of interviews uh, interviewing the most prominent people in IT security industry and in the infrastructure industry. Uh, so uh, today I'm with Andy Malone. Great to see you again. Great to see you. Thank you for coming. No, pleasure. Perfect. So today we're going to be talking about uh, cloud security. So you guys, if you if you want to get more knowledge in this subject, you should definitely listen to what kind of interesting stuff we're going to be talking about today. But uh, before we start, a couple of words uh, for introduction of uh, Andy. I'm pretty sure you know him because uh, he's speaking at different types of conferences, uh, Spice World, uh, Microsoft Ignite, uh, TechHeads, and uh, many other international conferences. Too many to mention. Uh, too many to mention. <laughs> he's a world class speaker, consultant, and instructor. Uh, you also wrote a book, right? I did. The Seventh Day. Okay, cool. And it's not a tech book. It's not a tech book. No. Okay. It's a geeky sci fi thriller. Hopefully with a lot of action. Oh, lots of action. You should definitely yeah. guys check on Sequel it. Sequel this year. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's moving forward. That's, yeah. that's great. Uh, and uh, Andy is also doing a lot of tweeting, yes? Yeah. At Andy Malone. So check it out. What do you usually tweet about? Oh, everything. So, uh, security. Mostly yeah. a lot of security. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the odd advert for my book. As okay. Well. <laughs> okay. So, so but generally security. Security yeah. news uh, yeah. and so on. So, so definitely check out Andy's uh, Twitter. And uh, well, uh, if you're ready, I'm ready. Yep. Bring it on. Okay. Perfect. So uh, I got a couple of disturbing questions uh, for you today. Disturbing. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so, uh, well, the first question is, uh, what kind of data you will never put into the cloud? You know, this is an open-ended question, mm -hmm. so um, it really depends on the type of business that you are. So if you're a financial company, there may be legal or compliance uh, constraints, um, meaning that you've got to keep your data in a specific area. Um, I think a lot of companies that are going down that road, you need to maybe think about hybrid solutions. Mm -hmm. So you might find that certain data you'll put in the cloud and other data you maybe want to keep on premises. Mm. It really depends on the type of business. What we're seeing is a real shift in the industry at the moment. So last year, the European Union Directive uh, came out. Uh, and uh, what that means is now that the cloud companies are uh, under orders to actually store their data in a specific way, in a specific location. So companies like Microsoft, Google, uh, and so on, what we've seen, we've seen regional data centers. So, you know, Dublin, Amsterdam, and so on, that cover parts of Europe. But now mm -hmm. what we're seeing is specific data centers. So for example, in Germany, and also in the UK, um, that are trying to tap into the government uh, healthcare, financial markets of those particular countries. So I think once these come into e each individual country, mm. I think we'll see a lot more companies kind of progressing Moving into the cloud. The cloud yeah. So I think have this conversation maybe in a year or two time mm -hmm. and I think many many companies who want to be compliant will will be moving into those localized data centers. Sometimes it's interesting like uh, when when uh, we hear companies saying that oh, I will never put my data into the cloud but they are actually using oh, they will. Gmail. Everybody example, everybody's yeah. using the cloud. Absolutely. Facebook or yeah. whatever we all use the cloud. And and we all put information that uh, sometimes we are not even aware of. No, yes. That's right. Like we, we've got all the personal data in the cloud and then we are saying oh we don't want to use the cloud. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe we should rethink our strategy a little bit. You know, people often ask me, um, do, you, do you think everything will move to the cloud? It's, you know, you look at music and vinyl, the biggest climb in, in technology at the moment mm. is, is the return of vinyl. People want to have something physical. So the question is, will everything progress to the cloud or will it come back? I think because of the low cost of storage, I think we will always have a hybrid Oh, type, type. You know, re retro cars are always I, uh, trendy. Absolutely, yeah? <laughs> absolutely. No. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, uh, what are the current trends in cloud security? Is there something special that we should pay attention to? Um, I would say um, many of the vendors are now starting to look beyond passwords. I know that you focus a lot on passwords yeah. and hacking passwords, and that's definitely a weakness area in the cloud. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing is a number of the big vendors coming together, um, uh, kind of single identity. So rather, you know, rather than passwords, take the S off and just have a single password. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think identity and authentication management are mm -hmm. a big change. Things like multi-factor authentication mm -hmm. really, uh, you know, making a really good move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, th I think that's good. Um, mm -hmm. And also with things like 
multi-factor authentication, it's making it easier for people. Mm -hmm. So rather than having to um, put in a text message in or answer an email or mm -hmm. listen to a voice, it's a simple thing now like putting a fingerprint on a phone or something and that will authenticate you. Mm -hmm. So both Microsoft and Google do that, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that means multi-factor authentication and, and also things like local uh, location awareness as mm -hmm. well. I think that's excellent. Okay. So um, if you're signing in from you know here in Oslo today, um, but then in an hour's time you're suddenly signing in from New York, that's not right. Something's not right there. Yeah. Um, so and the cloud's becoming more intelligent. And We've I got think machine learning. I, 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 that's right. And I think yeah. it's becoming safer mm -hmm. as well for folks. So. Mm. Do you see Azure being changed from security perspective in time? Well, like, Azure, Azure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of it is coming from um, not necessarily the industry, a lot of it is coming from governance okay. as well. So, you know, there's a bigger push for the cloud businesses to be uh, compliant, legally compliant. And I think a lot of the tech uh, is, is, is pushing that. One thing I would say is a lot of companies like Google and Microsoft um, I, I would say that one issue that they're doing is their products like Azure, they're, they're pushing out features every week. Mm -hmm. So many so many features coming out. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think... Actually, yesterday there was a change uh, that surprised everybody because if you were speaking about Azure and you've got all your demos ready, uh, it was <laughs> it was quite interesting because like ev everything was just like changed. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy! It's <laughs> and crazy. And then you were like waking up, and you were like, oh shoot, I, I have know. to change my stuff. Yeah. But I, I would say what the one thing that they're doing is that they're, they're making the mistake of bundling security features mm. as features. Mm. Yes. And the problem with that is that you're going to get some businesses with that don't have those features because they're not paying the extra. I think they should separate the security features mm. and everybody get the security features mm. and the regular features so of the product. So it should be more like an option to choose from? Yeah, yeah I, I think, mm -hmm. but everybody should get security. Okay. So I don't think that that should be made a sellable feature. I yeah. think that every, every... It should be built in and so on. I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a very good approach. Like, yeah. like that's what Microsoft is doing with the, with the newest Windows 10 and all the security features that exactly. are on board with that. Exactly. Well, it's with the enterprise, so you kind of like pay for it. But on the, on the other hand, when you already have an enterprise, it's all built in. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, absolutely. And what about situations when, when you've got a cloud user already? And is there something that this person or organization can do to increase the security in the cloud? Multi-factor authentication. Okay. And also, I would say, encryption as okay. well. Um, I, you know, encryption is an interesting thing. The, one of the problems with cryptography at the moment is that the industry, um, I mean, Microsoft are as guilty as everybody else. They say, oh, we encrypt. But mm -hmm. it's it's very confusing. What kind of encryption do you use? Is it is it data at rest encryption? Is it data in transit? And remember, the, the big thing about all cloud vendors is that they really use one primary encryption mechanism, and that's SSL. Mm -hmm. So everything is over trust, mm -hmm. assuming that SSL doesn't break. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, if if SSL broke, then you know you basically have potential keys to the kingdom. So good advice would be to perhaps have some kind of utility that would encrypt your data locally mm -hmm. and then send it to the cloud, mm -hmm. already encrypted. Yeah. I like that idea. So that you are able to connect, always get it back uh, on site yeah. when you need it. Yeah? And multi-factor authentication. Okay. That would definitely improve mm -hmm. What security. about the disk encryption uh, within the virtual machines? Could this also... Like, totally. Yeah? Okay. Um, well, Microsoft, I forget the name of it, the Windows Server 2016. Yeah, the shielded uh, VMs. Th yes, yeah. shielded mm -hmm. VMs, absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that um, even as a, um, a cloud administrator, you should not be able to mm -hmm. gain access to a, a yeah. user's data. Absolutely, and and uh, I don't know if you will agree with me, but in my opinion, uh, last year, if, I, if we could mention something cool in security, I would name it as a virtual TPM. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. Because like that changes the security landscape yeah, so much. Absolutely. And, absolutely. and both like on, on premise and both in the cloud and uh, wh whatever you want to use it, you are always able to increase the security relying on the TPM. Absolutely. Yeah? So that, that's kind of something cool.
So now it's time for soft questions, if you're ready. Okay. Yeah, okay, first question. If, you, if you're going to see the kiddo and uh, then <laughs> this kiddo is going to look at you and it's like, I want to do security, I want to be like this guy and I want to do this and that in that area, what would you advise, maybe not a kiddo, but a teenager or a student, um, so what would you advise to this person? What this person should know? You know, I, I, I'm, this is kind of weird that you asked me this question because the other day, I was in a burger place, oh. right? We all go to these burger places, yeah. right? And there's this kid and he's wiping tables. Yeah. And he was about 17. Oh, okay. and, and we got talking, okay. right? Uh, okay. and, he says, and he says to me, what do you do? And I says, oh, I'm in IT. He says, oh, I'd love to be in IT. Oh, that's great. All yeah. right. So I says, well, why are you cleaning tables? He says, mm -hmm. well, because I left school with nothing. Oh, no. And I says, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because you know, you can all, you, computers you, are everywhere. Yeah? The, the, you can go to a bookstore. You can, you can, and I said, do you have an interest in computers? He says, yeah. I said, he says, where do I start? Mm. Well, get A plus, security plus, that type of, yeah. you know, certification, um, and and don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. But there's there's there are well structured paths. You don't need to go to fancy schools. Um, you can learn your, I mean, YouTube, for goodness sake. I mean, yeah. YouTube's got some great learning content right up there. Mm. So once you get the basics, once mm -hmm. you become f familiar with the basics, then there are many, many kind of structured programs to go there. But absolutely, uh, IT certification is definitely the way forward. And it's amazing how many people who have done, you know, fancy degrees at university that often say to me, I actually, you know, my IT certification is mm -hmm. so much more valuable than, than that. Because it's very practical, yeah? Totally, that's, that's totally. The point. And, and the thing about IT certification as well, you know, things like Microsoft certification mm -hmm. and, and so on, it, is it's constantly evolving. So you're constantly being pushed. Mm -hmm. and, and if you don't push yourself, that's the challenge. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's the big draw to the industry, okay. for me anyway. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good to know. Are there any free resources that you could recommend for, for guys to get knowledge? Oh, YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. I know that your website, you do lots of mm -hmm. kind of free videos we and do, things like do. that. Microsoft so, Virtual Academy. Absolutely. That's course, a yeah. great resource. Yeah. It is. And, and it's free. And, yeah, and also you've got things like hands-on labs and free hands-on labs and things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get, get hands-on. I mean, remember a lot of these products like Windows Server, Windows, you can, you can download like six-month versions of these for free. Mm -hmm. And you can you know, work with the product. Um, and that's the best way to learn. Andy, and what would be your recommendation for advanced guys? Like, if someone is already a specialist in security and these guys want to, uh, like, they don't know what to do because they kind of feel like they, they have achieved everything from the knowledge perspective, but, th but the new things are coming. Is there something right now that, in your opinion, is worth paying attention to that, that these guys should know? I think, at the moment, the cloud industry is knowledge-based. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, and what does that mean? What does knowledge base mean? It means that the cloud knows everything about you. Mm. So you store your stuff in Azure, in Google, <laughs> Facebook. They know exactly who you are. Mm. I mean, of course, they would never look at your data, right? Mm, sure. Of course. Mm -hmm. But um, should and could are two different things. Mm. The fact is that the companies know your data um, I've worked in the Microsoft Data Center, I've been to the Microsoft Data Center, I've worked with the teams. If they wanted to, um, they could find your data. Mm -hmm. They could see the, the names of your files, they could open your files, mm -hmm. they could. Um, so what we're now seeing, in, I, I think, is something called zero knowledge okay. uh, systems. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of companies that are starting to, to kind of emerge where you essentially just buy a block of data. Mm -hmm. So you buy a terabyte of data, mm -hmm. and that's all they see. They mm -hmm. just see the block of data. They can't see anything within that. Um, and I think this is quite exciting. Mm -hmm. um, so it means they don't know the file structure, they don't know the names of the files, they don't know what type of files, and um, this block of data, you encrypt it, and mm -hmm. you have the private key. Mm. So if you lose the private key, it's gone. It's gone. Um, yeah. An example of one of these products is, is Spider Oak. Spider Oak is, is a complete zero knowledge based system. Now, whether it's compliant with ISO 20, you know, th that's 
to the point. Mm -hmm. And I suppose the unethical side of it is you don't know what's being stored in there as well. Yeah. So you know, there's there's a for and against argument. But it's interesting that 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 is starting to emerge in the in the industry, and I think. Um, professionals need to, to look at these and, and understand the benefits, the pros and cons of both types of system. And what if the company that is already quite well established company wants to move their stuff to the cloud? What they should do? Um, I, well, um, uh, Azure mm -hmm. and I mean, uh, I'm because we're MVPs, of yes. course. So uh, looking at uh, Azure, I, I would say Azure is actually one of the best yeah, it's, um, it's because it in, in the security yeah. compliance center, there's a there's a compliance area. You can put in the, the country that you're in, the region, the business. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft actually show you the compliance documents. So they prove to you that you are compliant. So mm -hmm. if you're um, stepping forward, let's say you've got a customer and the customer wants to work with you and, and, and they're saying, well, how do I, you know, we need to be ISO 27001. How do I know that this, uh, I can keep that ISO 27001 status? You can go to Microsoft and all the documentation is there. Mm -hmm. So it proves that they are compliant. Oh, and, yeah. and I think that's great for customers. Azure has a nice um, possibility because it's very scalable. Totally, yeah, it's elastic. It's That's a great elastic. word. Yeah, and and at the same time, like we have been um, experiencing in general within the past year, different types of denial of service attacks. Sure. And if, if you put your uh, at least some part of your services in a cloud, uh, if you are being attacked, yeah, then it's just like well, a couple of more dollars that you have to pay, but still, it's an emergency situation. Sure. And then you are able to expand your services pretty much immediately, and then at some point you're going to be not vulnerable to denial of service, but only if the whole internet is against you. <laughs> uh, even it. Azure will not help you. That's it, that's it. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's another, another case. Um, okay, and are there any interesting um, resources for those guys to check on? that you would recommend? Uh, yeah, I mean, as I say, the documentation is everywhere. There's mm -hmm. the, the uh, virtual academy. They should check, you, check out your sessions. Definitely, oh, always yeah. here at Nick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. I'm doing um, sessions today on uh, AAD Connect internals. I'm doing one on uh, troubleshooting Office 365. Okay. Um, we we do you know sessions at Ignite or Spice World or. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They are all yeah. recorded to be found. Yeah, in the there's internet, a lot yeah. there. Yeah, there's, there's a, a lot. lot there. Actually, mm -hmm. on my uh, on my Twitter page at Andy Malone, there is a link to my page at Microsoft, so you can go in and view those uh, mm -hmm. presentations. You, you speak also on security, so th th this kind of sessions so you can be also found. Yeah, Absolutely. So you yeah. guys can also check on that. So, so make sure that. So uh, again, you know, you were, you were talking about kids who mm -hmm. wanted to learn. Great way. These videos are right there. You know. They're just free everywhere. And yeah, uh, go and have a look. Learn. Yeah, absolutely, you know? and it's very inspirational yeah. uh, to, to, to be able to see like someone talking about the, the future solutions, yes, because yeah. that's that's uh, what we've been discussing today, that the cloud is out there, uh, but uh, the cloud is developing pretty much every day. Totally, and, uh, every day. And if we don't stay <laughs> up to date, we're going we're gonna to miss out very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So just to summarize in a couple of words, so today we talked about different types of security um, tips that you guys should check uh, in order to be more secure in the cloud. And we've been talking also about which data we shouldn't be putting in the cloud and uh, what are the current regulations that uh, could make companies um, to be more um, comfortable uh, in case of putting data in the cloud because it's going to be, for example, within the certain countries. Yeah. And that's what a lot of companies are demanding, like, sure. I will never put my data in the cloud unless it's in this country. Yeah? Sure. So that's kind of like uh, developing that area. Yeah. Uh, we also talk uh, a little bit about Azure security and scalability and the newest features. So plenty of cool subjects. Uh, and as simple as this, uh, if you guys some, have some questions uh, to Andy or to myself within this interview, when you want to know more, uh, then post your questions in the comment sections below. We'll be watching you and waiting for you there, right? Definitely. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, oh, thank you so much uh, for the interview. Pleasure. Absolutely pleasure. Yeah. And make sure that you guys uh, click on the link to see uh, more information related with our interview and so on. We are waiting for you there and uh, looking forward to see you again. Thanks. Bye. Bye.